a special title, which is Policy Manager of Local Intelligence Team at the Office for Civil Society. And a card is about that big. Uh, can you give a warm welcome, please? is involved in doing. Um, I'm going to tell you a bit about my role, talk a little bit about national policy and hopefully we'll have some time for um, some questions where we can actually begin to talk about social enterprise in a bit more detail. So what I'm going to give you is a bit of an overview of the presentation, but maybe then you know, if you've got any comments or any questions, um, we can spend a bit of time on that. Uh, what I can do is each month, in terms of the role I've got, I can write a report in terms of what I found out about the North West. Um, and so it gives you an opportunity maybe to get some messages back to the centre um, if you've got strong views on anything. So what I'm going to talk about is big society, where are we now? Big society is a priority of the Prime Minister. And it's a bit small probably for you to see that, but I've started with some of the things David Cameron's been saying. Because he's the person I think who's got who has the vision and he's telling us how he sees things changing. And he talks about relationships being better, the glue that binds people being stronger, um, people thinking about other people's well-being when we make decisions. And we know that when we give people and communities more power over their lives, more power to come together and work together and make life better, great things happen. So that's the, the, the vision of stuff. And I think the view that this government has, the coalition government, is that government has taken too big a role in recent years. It's become very centralised, or too centralised maybe too centralised in this country, and that it's the time to actually decentralise and give more power back to local communities. So how do we translate it? Well, we've got actually a minister of big society um, who leads, uh, Nick Hurd, um, again, it's a bit small, that. Um, he's in the bit of cabinet office that I work for, so I work in office for civil society. Um, same sort of things. Talk, he's talking about getting people involved to work together to improve their communities, influencing the world around you, feeling connected, making a contribution, and trust those around you. And it's about well-being, and it's a thread that runs from the idea of building a bigger and stronger society through our focus on well-being, and the idea that ministers and commissioners should consider the full value and effect of the services they provide. So it's, it's actually saying there's a social value to, to what we do um, in terms of public services um, and local communities. And it's building on the work that's been done already. This is not a new idea. Um, if you ever meet Nick Kern, and maybe some of you have done so already, he always talks about building on the base of volunteering, the social action, the strong community um, sense of pride that we've got in this country. So sometimes it comes across in the papers as being something different, but he's very, very clear that we've got a fantastic base. So that's the visionary stuff, and that's the big picture. Um, just to go on now to how it works out in practice, because as social enterprises, it impacts on you as policy, um, and the coalition's policies are really quite different, and I think it's taking some time for the changes to feed through, because there's legislation happening. Uh, but don't underestimate the, the intention to change the way that we do some things. So there's three bits, and in the Office of Civil Society where I work, we have programmes linked to the three elements. The first one at the top there is that promoting social action. So that's actually getting the right framework so that people are encouraged um, and enabled to play a more active part in society. So one good example of that is probably the Olympics work that's going on at the moment, where we've got a massive number of people wanting to volunteer, because the framework's there. And there's a real opportunity to build on that. We're looking at the civil society at the moment. We're looking at how maybe we can actually build on that into the future, because not everybody who wants to volunteer is going to get an opportunity at the Olympics. But they clearly do want to make a contribution. So maybe building on that, because you know, we've got the IT, we've got the technology now to actually begin to tie people together with their, the interests that they've actually got. 
So promoting social action, volunteering at a local level, people doing things together, working for the good of their communities, the sort of not-for-profit organisations that have got social values at their heart. Those are the things in social action. Empowering communities is about actually transferring the power. And just before um, Christmas, the actual legislation went through. Um, and so now we've got the Localism Act rather than the bill. And there's a lot of stuff in that now that is beginning to feed through. It's going to be a month or two yet before, I say, local councils begin to change the way that they operate. But probably a good example is that today um, I can go back and vote for whether we should have a mayor in Salford or not. I think it's today, maybe, but it's actually today, or in that next Thursday, it's today. Um, but that, that was an opportunity. More than 10% of people wanted that opportunity to make that decision. Now they have the power to call for a vote. So there are things just beginning to feed through in the legislation now. Um, there's going to be lots more about neighbourhood planning, local planning, local housing plans, people in their neighbourhoods beginning <coughs> to shape the way that neighbourhoods um, develop in the future. And then the last one, which is one, again, that probably has a lot of interest to you as social enterprises, is this idea that opening up public services to a wide range of providers. So we've had a tradition of having direct provision of a lot of public services. A number have, have, have got out in terms of contracts in the past, but it's tended to be certain elements. This government is very clear that they want a range of providers. And you'll see that certain departments are perhaps moving quicker than others in the way in which they're spending <coughs> from a central government perspective. But this is, this is a real push now, not only in terms of local government, central government, and some of the big public services. Um, so those are the three big elements, and I've just put on this slide a few examples of some of the things that are actually happening. And again, you might have heard about one or two of these things. I, I can't go into detail because I've not got time. Um, but if you're interested, do follow up on them. There's lots on the Cabinet Office website, for example. In terms of social action, I mean, philanthropy and giving is one of the first ones that we've been doing lots of work on. There are a lot of people in this country who actually give already the time and money, um, but there are people who are giving large amounts, you know, some of the wealth, wealthier individuals, and we're looking to put in place mechanisms to make it easier to give, and easier to maybe direct um, your gifts in the way that you want to see them spent. And we've got some really good community foundations in the North West, and one developing in Lancashire at the moment, um, that are supporting that. So the government's trying to support that sort of thing. We've got the National Citizen Service, and we're going to have um, 30,000 yeah, 30,000 young people this summer taking part at the age of 16 in the National Citizen Service. So it's the second year, there were 8,000 this last summer, 30,000 this next summer, and it's going to build up the numbers until there'll be an opportunity for every 16-year-old, if they wish, to take it part in this programme, which is about getting involved in your local communities, learning about yourself, learning to work together as a team, but also making a contribution directly um, in your local community. I don't think there were many places in the Blackpool area, I don't know, you might be able to say otherwise this last summer, because there were just um, a few pilot schemes, but there will be places this summer. So if you have a 16 year old, he might be interested, um, just, uh, you can Google it, but um, it's on the um, Direct Gov website now, and tells you how to actually apply for a place. And most of the places are free, not, not all of them, so <coughs> A lot of them are free, so um, worth looking at. Community organisers and community first. Well, I think you've got your own brand of community organisers in Blackpool, actually, that you're, you're working on. But it's a government programme putting money into um, people working at a community level, very, very local, to encourage local communities to say what they want. And we've got a pilot programme on that. Community first, there is some um, funding coming to Blackpool for that. And that's a very enabled based programme where you set up a local community panel who decides how to spend the money. So again, it's really pushing things down to a very local level. Um, we've got um, Every Business Counts, which is one of the business programmes, Social Action Fund, which some of you may have heard of, which is a big programme trying to scale up some of the activity that's happening at a local level, and Big Society Awards, um, which are the awards for those organisations, and we've won a number of these awards in the North West over the last, you know, uh, last year, I think they've been in place. So, lots on social action, opening public services. We have the white paper, um, some of you may have contributed, there was a consultation on that. Um, 
Taking into account now the consultation, the government's moving forward with some more detailed plans on opening public services, and each department will begin to report back on their progress. So you may be aware that, for example, the Department of Health has done quite a big, quite a lot of work on encouraging spin-offs and um, things happening in terms of that. Um, some of the departments have been a bit slower, but um, all of them are now making progress with this. Um, we've got free schools so in education, we've got free schools in very local um, developments. We've got the work programme, the right to request and the right to provide, uh, which is you know, the new rights in, in legislation. We've got the mutuals pathfinders, which are a group of organisations around the country, which are, I suppose, um, showing the way in terms of mutuals developments. Um, and we've got a community budgets programme, which is about getting the budgets of all government departments and local budgets together in some areas to actually try out doing a much more joined up way of spending um, public funding. And in the North West, Greater Manchester and Cheshire West are the two areas that are trying that over the next um, year or so. I think I mean, it will be a significant change that will go into the future assuming that they're successful in doing that. So lots of big changes actually there. Um, and apparently, as I've mentioned some of those already, uh, there will be a community right to buy, there will be a community right to challenge. The local authorities get a power of competence shortly, which means that they can do all sorts of things that they've been restricted um, in terms of doing in the past. So it's something that's, um, I think, you know, this obviously a definition that's to do with the well-being of the community. Um, they have a power of competence if there is an assumption that they will be able to go ahead and an attempt to break down some of the red tape and some of the restrictions. And finally, the, the transparency agenda that we're putting lots more data in the public domain now. It's going to take a while before people use it, but lots, lots more available to people. You can see how your local authority, for example, spends its money now you want to go into the detail of it. But it's actually the analysis of that that will be really interesting when people begin to actually produce more of an analysis because if you look at it, it's a long list. But it begins to give you some sense of how local authorities spend the money. And other public bodies, certainly government departments begin to publish as well if you want to have a look. Um, it can be a bit hard, but it's, it's actually there. It goes into huge detail. Support for the voluntary community social enterprise. I suppose that's the one that you're really interested in. Um, there's been quite... A, a quite a amount of money in the Northwest transition funding for organisations to actually change the way they operate. Um, we're going to have to see, you know, how that how that's worked. Um, money's always limited, and at the moment funds are limited, so not everybody got the money they applied for. But there, there's a significant amount. We had a consultation on big society capital the other week. Um, I don't know who was there. I'm trying to remember. There were one or two people, I think, maybe there um, in Liverpool where um, Nick Hurd came up and the Chief Executive of Society Capital to actually talk to social enterprises and other organisations, charitable organisations, to ask them their views on the big society capital and the loans that are going to be available. Um, so we've had the